Welcome back to another objectivity video. And as you can see, Keith is wearing the purple gloves and you know that means business, doesn't Imperial it? Purple. Imperial. We've got an amazing object associated with a very famous person. And as always, it's in a box mm -hmm. and a lovely box this time. Yeah, it's a very, very nice 19th century box. It has a name in a brass plate there, which is slightly misleading, but, but relevant. It is Sir John Wolfe Barry. Very good engineer, Victorian engineer, one of the big figures of that period. Probably more recognisably, he finished off work for Tower Bridge. So Tower, that's, that's more that's like it. it. Tower yeah. Bridge. Okay, let's open the box. Mm. Look at this. Here we go. It might not be instantly recognisable what these are, but yeah, it'll start yeah. looking more familiar if I give it that pose. Mm. What are these, Keith? Uh, so this is a very large set of dividers. So what you're doing is measuring two points on a plan or a map or a chart. So you'll put, you'll, you'll mm. put the point down on one place yeah. on your paperwork and there on your other part. And you could a scale just here. I guess one would imagine these were the dividers used by our chap on the, on the box, Wolf, when he was doing his circle lines and his tower bridges. Is that I, the case? No, they, they belong to, to John Wolf Barry, but he bought them presumably as a memento of, of someone even more famous. Even more famous. And let's put people out of their misery mm -hmm. because it's written here. So Christopher Wren, February 1697. Christopher Wren was one of the leading natural philosophers of the 17th century. He was instrumental in the process that founded the Royal Society, so it was created after one of his lectures at Gresham College. He was professor of astronomy there, but he did many other things besides. And of course, the thing that he's most well known for these days is the rebuilding of London after the Great Fire and the construction of St Paul's Cathedral. St. Paul's Cathedral, another mega, mega London landmark. Yeah. And these are his dividers I'm holding up. This is incredible. Well, they have his name engraved on them. They're certainly a period instrument. But as we have learned, of course, it's always very difficult to associate an object with a person unless you have a solid provenance. All right, then. Maybe Sir Christopher Wren's dividers. Maybe not. But we would hate you to stop watching and not see something more obviously associated with him, something more personal to Christopher Wren. And we found something very personal to him that we're going to show you just over here. Okay, Keith, so unsurprisingly, there are a lot of Christopher Wren papers here at the Royal Society. We've, mm. got, we've got some out, but this is the one I want to talk about. This is the one I want to show people. Here we have a cipher of Dr. Christopher Wren's by him communicated the same day to the Royal Society and ordered to be sent to Monsieur Huygens. This is Christian Huygens, another famous scientist yes. at the time. And here we have a cipher. A is 7, B is 4, C is 4, D is 4, E is uh, 12. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's kind of odd, isn't it? There's some doubling up, yeah. but we were told by the experts if there's a bit of doubling up, that means you just figure out the context. But this is a this is a something we would all do when we were children, actually. This is a code, so you could send yeah. letters to other people, and if it was intercepted, it couldn't be read too easily. <laughs> Not too easily, but certainly possible. But yeah, it's just a simple transposition between letters and numbers. We have another one here, actually, and this is a cipher of Christian Huygens. He gives a little bit of context as to why he would be using this. It says, he's written something containing an invention of his which he not thought fit to make public as yet, but would secure it to himself this way, which he sent to the Royal Society in a letter of his dated February 6, 1669. So there we go. There's a, a different cipher that was used by Huygens, and he has said here it's because he's invented something and he doesn't want to make it public yet, so he's being yeah. secretive about it. So presumably Huygens has sent word of his invention via this code and Wren is, is communicating to him back using a, a slightly different code just to preserve Huygens' secret. I love this, it's like they're high school kids or something except with cool <laughs> science inventions. I'll tell you what also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay down a little challenge here for the objectivity viewers. If you wanna send us a message on Twitter or Facebook, why don't you write it to us using Christopher Wren's cipher We'll put links in the description and you can see it on the screen. And then I will translate those ciphers to see what you said. Actually, I won't do it. I'm going to get James to do it. Is that all right with you, James? <laughs> yeah. That's the first James has heard of it. So why don't you send us a message using Christopher Wren's cipher? So we're not sure if the dividers were his. We hope they were. 
but this was definitely Christopher Wren's private code, the Wren code. And, and James is your personal Bletchley Park. <laughs> Send us your messages. So here's where it all begins for the Royal Society. But this is before the King was even involved. That's right. So this is the very first meeting of the Royal Society after a lecture by Christopher Wren at Gresham College. And memorandum, here we go. It all starts here. Christopher Wren's work is known to anyone who knows any of the landmarks of London. That's right. Well, Wren at this point is a, is a natural philosopher, of course, that the fire of London hasn't happened yet. The reconstruction of London that he was involved in hasn't happened yet. 28th of November 1660, he's Gresham Professor of Astronomy, and after he gives a lecture, 12 individuals get together to establish what they think will be a college. 